Well, tomorrow's Black Feminine TV talking to the director of uh, this amazing documentary, Tommy Oliver. Talk to me about, you know, you are a producer, you are a director, you know, how did this subject come to you? So I'm from Philly and in Philly, move is sort of always there where I didn't quite know who they were or what happened, but I heard of them and I heard a move and I heard of there was some bombing or something, but that was about it. And at some point being a research junkie, I just went down the rabbit hole. And I read everything I could. I read probably seven or eight books, every article I could find. I watched everything I could. And then I went to the Temple Urban Archive and went through most of what they had. But I realized there was still more that I was missing. And so I had a buddy introduce me to move. He introduced me to Ramona Africa. And when I went to meet her at this small little cafe in West Philly, she brought along Mike Africa with her. And Mike and I hit it off just as friends very quickly. We're about the same age. We have a similar temperament and he's got three boys. I've got three boys and it's just been, it was very easy. And then on top of that, I learned so much in that meeting and I didn't know that two of the move nine had died in prison. I also didn't realize that seven of them were still in prison at that point, nor did I understand, well, one, that he was born in prison but that he had committed his entire life to getting them out of prison. And this all from a person who, despite having every reason to be angry, to be mean, who didn't have a shred of bitterness about him, he was just a, a kid who went his parents' home. He went his mom home. He went his dad home. And then, so we became friends. And it just became something that I needed to do. I just wanted to be a part of capturing that process, which also meant that I had to understand why they were in prison. And so that went way deeper down the rabbit hole in terms of researching and trying to understand what happened and then how to tell it visually. How long, documentaries take forever to make, you know, like you said, there's the research, there's getting people involved, there's yeses and a no, you know, and then there's the editing process. How long was the whole process? About three and a half years. And so, <laughs> three and a half yeah. years. But this story, yeah. to gather yeah. all of the material you got, you know, and so, you know, the, 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 the beauty about any documentary is the editing process because you have all mm -hmm. this footage. You have to decide how to tell the story and engage the audience with everything that's true, you know. So, mm -hmm. talk to me about the challenges. You have the story, you know how you want to tell it, but now the editing process, you know, you and Mr. Kehoe. You know, talk to me how, you know, you whittled down the important parts of one, what you wanted to show. <laughs> so you say, I know what I wanted to tell. I didn't. And so it was so much of listening to the footage and allowing it to take us where it needed to go. And so I knew that I wanted to follow the emotion. I knew that I wanted to tell a story that accurately represented what happened. And I knew that I wanted to do something that was compelling and that was really about it. And so in, in understanding sort of, how, there, were, there were so many parts because you couldn't just start at August 8th, it wouldn't make any sense. And so there were so many things that led up to August 8th and we had to figure out how to tell those things efficiently because I'm not exaggerating when I say that this could have very easily been a six hour doc series and there still would have been stuff on the cutting room floor. And so it was about trying to find the the best way to tell it telling a, a disciplined story but also again it's a very human and emotional story and staying true to that and the editing along with the cinematography because i also shot the film getting out of the way where it's not meant to be flashy it's not meant to be any of those things are in your face They're, they need to be and i tried to make them in service of the project in service of the emotion in service of the journey we're getting a lot of stories about injustices coming to light. They've been around, but never so much in the forefront, never, never so much, I think, marketed in the right way. You know, you can go back to Hurricane and maybe we've talked before that. And mm -hmm. in more recent times, you know, we've had Just Mercy, you know, there's another documentary that's out for a time. And then this film, you know, where it, it has a satisfactory conclusion, you know, based on these two stories. Is that the genre that, you know, obviously, is this now a genre? You know, that people wanted uh, uh, the producers and, and 
the powers that be are looking to tell to get these stories out now. Are, are people now becoming more woke? <laughs> So I think you know me well enough to probably know that I don't really care what's in vogue or what people want. Like, that's not what it's about in the least. And I didn't do this for any of those reasons. And I also had no idea how it was going to turn out. I had no idea that they were ultimately going to get out. And I was just doing it because it was Mike and he wanted him home and he wanted to, he was willing to do whatever it took. But for me, look, you've cared about these sort of projects for a long time. I've cared about these sort of stories for a long time. The rest of the world is now just caring more. Like you and I don't care about these things any more or less than we did in 2013 at Toronto. Like there's a, there's a reason that you created the platform that you created. And it's not because of everybody else's concern for it. It's because you know, it's important. And so with, with me, that's what it was. It was like, this is a story that needed to be told, needed to be told right. And so I told it. And it just happens to be at a time where the rest of society is finally paying more attention. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's not enough time. We can go on a long time, you know, and it's great, you know, for this story to come out. I did not know so much about it until I saw this documentary. I heard of movement. I mean, move, mm -hmm. but not so much, you know, like, you know, you're only getting snippets, whether it's in a history book or mentioned in the paper and so forth. And so we need the stories and I commend you for putting out this story. You know, what goes now, before I let you go, into the projects you want to direct? Because you're more known as a producer, not so much, you know, as a director. So when you get behind and want to tell the story as a director, what's the ingredient that says, I'm going to do this? It's, I'm very fortunate where like, I don't have to take a project and I don't, I'm not interested in, in sort of being a director for hire and it's got to be something that I love and that I'm the best possible person to, to make this thing because these things take a lot of effort, but when you love stuff and it's a bit of a cliche, but it's true. It's like, I didn't care how much time it took. I wasn't checking the clock. I wasn't checking how much money I was spending. I wasn't checking any of it. Like, it didn't matter. It was all about doing something that I cared about, doing something that I could be proud of, doing something that was artistically fulfilling. And so that's what it really comes down to. It's doing stuff that I can be proud of, that I know how to do well, that has the ability to incite conversation and affect people in a meaningful way. And, but I'm also in a rush where I'm, again, very fortunate. I've turned down a lot of stuff and I sleep like a baby. It's like, it's just about doing the things that I can be proud of and doing the things that showcase us in the ways that we should be as complicated, loving, three-dimensional people. And anything other than that, I'm good. Well, I commend your tunnel vision to staying focused on telling the story so that everybody can get it. it you know, I commend HBO for putting it out for a bigger audience to see it. You know, you had the festival run. Now you'll get the HBO platform run, and that's great. Obviously, I'm always interested. You know me. I'm always going to support the work you do behind as a producer or a director. So keep telling these stories. That's gives me work, you know, and uh, we'll see. <laughs> I got you. At some point. There's, there's a lot more coming up. And so I'll just say this, that the – my company, we've got incredible people and we've been developing and building in a pretty awesome way. In 2021 and 2022, are going to be bonkers. With that said, keep it going. Have yourself a great day. You too. Great to see you, man.